Well, hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God's with you exactly in the place where you are. Have you ever noticed at times when we pray and we ask God for something that sometimes we don't get it immediately? Well, many of us stop and say, well, we don't get it at all. Uh, but then a lot of the time things come in time and some of the time when we've submitted our life to God, it comes even better than what we first asked. There are so many things that I have prayed to the Lord for in my life that have not come the way I wanted them, but have come in ways that have been far better. And sometimes it's been over time and sometimes I've had to pray more than once. It seems that if you're to know Jesus, it's to know in a sense sometimes how Jesus works. Let's go to Mark's gospel. Let's have a look at Mark chapter 8. Verse 22, they came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man to him, that's Jesus, and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. And then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again and he looked intently and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. And then he sent him away to his home saying, do not even go into the village. This is such a rich passage of scripture. Jesus goes into a village and they bring a blind man to Jesus. And what's Jesus do? Jesus takes him immediately out of the village. Jesus takes him out of the village. Now, if we read the other passages in Mark, there are other occasions when Jesus is about to do something for someone. What does he do? He takes them out of the village. He takes them out of the environment that they're in. See, sometimes our environments are that which capture us, that stop us from being the man, the woman that we believe in our heart, that God wants us to be. That sometimes we're stuck in the rut of our environment whether it be family, whether it be our work, whether it be the church we belong to, whether it be the place where we're studying, we can get stuck in ruts at time and things can become so familiar that we don't open our heart up to the possibility of new. And we also know that sometimes it's good things that prevent us from doing the best things at time. And sometimes just because an environment is difficult for us, we all know that there are certain environments you just can't, because of commitment, walk away. But sometimes we have to mentally step out of our environment in order to experience God in our life. And so it says they came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. Now, what did they want? They clearly wanted healing. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva in his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, can you see anything? So they bring a man to Jesus. They want healing or they at least want comfort. Often when I go to places to speak and to share, people will bring people to me and say, will you pray for them? Sometimes they're not asking that things would change, but just rather, would you just encourage this person? Would you touch this person? Uh, would you, would you, would you, you know, uh, say a word of prayer for them? Well, Jesus, he immediately has a better thought. And his better thought is, I could bring healing to these people. So he takes him out of his environment uh, and he prays with him. And he then says to him, can you see anything? Now, when we read this passage of scripture, some people think, oh, gee, Jesus wasn't capable of healing in one go. Jesus wasn't capable of healing all the way. Jesus didn't know what was happening. Well, we only have to read the previous stories of Jesus performing the many miracles he did when he prayed, when he spoke, and things happened and they happened instantly, we know that that's not the case. What's sort of the writer Mark trying to communicate here to us? He says, can you see anything? In other words, I want your cooperation in your healing. I want your faith in your healing. 
I want your faith in your circumstance. Sometimes we throw ourselves on the mercy of God and we send a prayer out to heaven and we say to God, God, work. And yet we don't stir faith with us. It's almost like just a hope prayer. It's a, it's a prayer we throw out there and in our heart there isn't the faith to believe that God can and that God will and that we need to raise our faith. We need to raise our faith. In coming times, I'm traveling to a whole number of different places in Australia and Canada and the United States. And inevitably, people will come to me and say, will you pray with people? And will you pray for healing? Will you pray for circumstances that are difficult? And I will. I'm very conscious I can do nothing for anybody. I can't even grow hair on my head. But I do believe and I have seen amazing and crazy things occur in people's lives. And, and so uh, I will pray in faith, faith in God, not faith in me, because I can't do anything for anybody. And what Jesus is asking here is, are you going to cooperate in your healing? He says, what do you see? He says, well, I just see people as if they're like trees. And the man looked and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. And then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again and he looked intently and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. It would appear, and we don't understand it at times also, that sometimes Jesus works in our lives, Jesus heals in our lives, Jesus does things in our lives in stages. And if we had much longer, maybe at a weekly on the Sundays when I get longer, uh, I, I could unfold that because sometimes in my own life, I've needed Jesus to do things over time, even though I've wanted them instantly. And then it says in, in verse 26, and then he sent him away to his home saying, do not even go into the village. Do not even go into the village. What he's saying is don't go back to the same environment. Now, we know that that's physically sometimes not possible for us not to go back to the same home, the same work, the same place of study we might be, the same retirement village where we might be, that it's not practical to think we can go somewhere else. But in a sense, we have to mentally, mentally shift that whilst I may have to go back into my physical surroundings, I mentally am not stepping back into my mental surroundings. I'm, I'm, I'm allowing change to occur. See, faith is something that we step into. It's something that we are active about. And I want to say to you today, as we conclude in prayer, if there are things that you need in your life, if there are things that you need God to do for you, that you can surrender to him and say, God, it's your choice. You do what you've got to do. But Lord, I need you. And allow the presence of God to come and be with you right now. And to recognize that sometimes God is at work in us when he gives us all we want straight away or he gives us what we want over time. Loving Father, we give you thanks and praise. There's so much we could more say about this passage of scripture, but it's a deeply spiritual scripture. It's a deeply prayerful scripture. Allow us, Lord God, to cooperate with your work. Allow us, God, to surrender our will to your will. Allow us, Lord God, to surrender that which we don't understand, but know that you work when we believe. And Lord, we pray those words of another scripture that says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, bless us today. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.